we go. Welcome, nice. everybody. Hi, Kathy. Good morning. Good, Good afternoon. Morning. Welcome to Networking Confidence to Grow Your Biz. I'm Dave Meyer, and we have Kathy Paper with Rock Paper Star here as well. And this is part of our regular outreach to help get you more content and more help to grow your business. Kathy, of course, is an absolute networking master. And if you caught her yesterday on WCCO, she was featured on the 9 a.m. broadcast talking about this event and how to network to grow your biz. And so we're going to get right into our content for the day. As I mentioned just a moment before, we are taking your questions during today's event, and we're trying to make this as useful and helpful for you as possible. So go ahead and log in your questions, either via the chat or the Q&A tool. Happy to have you um, answer those here. Inside of chat, if you wouldn't mind in Zoom, go ahead and tell us what you're hoping to get out of today so that we're sure to make sure to cover that for you. Um, I see Catherine's here, Deb, Mary, Julie, and Robin have all con contacted in already. And we have a big group of folks that are going to be joining us. So thanks and welcome to you all. Um, here's a little bit about us and how to get a hold of us. And please don't be shy about getting out to us and connecting because this is for you. And we're really trying to help our clients, our friends to grow their businesses using their tools or using our tools. And Kathy, you want to say anything as a quick intro? Um, no, I just think, it, you know, the only thing I'd say is I try really to be active on LinkedIn and sharing tips. And it's been one of my goals in the pandemic is to do a little bit more. So I'm doing more videos and they, uh, they definitely showcase some of the bloopers. I've got a new one uh, coming out that will probably make people chuckle. So I love it. I love it. Thank follow you. Follow on me. LinkedIn or Instagram. It's kind of my, my little outlet. I'm not sure how good it is, but it, it makes me chuckle. So Awesome. Well, perfect. And Kathy, tell us a little bit about Rock Paper Star. Yes, yeah, sure. So I've been um, helping people for the past 15 years um, since when I left Best Buy, where I was an executive coach, really working on um, specifically your personal brand, kind of that how do you show up? What is it that, you, that you're doing? Whether it's on LinkedIn, being a speaker, playing to your strengths, and then help people develop a networking strategy so that you can find the right people around you. Um, I like to say, Dave, too, you and I met um, probably almost 10 years ago through office mm -hmm. centers, mm -hmm. um, through Lori Spies, who's got a phenomenal community and six different locations. And you know, having those people around you to build your network, that's part of what I teach with this Impact 100. And then, of course, groups that I call that community practice and new connections. Um, almost think of it like a, like a tennis drill for networking. Where do you go and you work on your own thing? And maybe along the way, you'll meet some other people. But it's getting really clear. And we do that for high level and um, uh, people that are just getting started on building their network. Excellent. Thank you. And welcome again. And uh, so delighted to have you with us, Kathy. All Thanks. right. So now... Let's talk, I want to just cover a very brief bit about BusyWeb. And so um, if you know us or if you're connected already, we're a growth marketing agency. We have 20 folks located in Champlin, which is just a little bit north of the Twin Cities. I know we have folks from all over the country dialing in. So hello, everyone, where it's lovely in the spring in Minnesota. And so we are, we are having a wonderful bout of weather here. Uh, if you need help with inbound marketing, growing your business, connecting, or just want to chat about any of those things, we would love a connection and an outreach. And uh, we've been doing this since 1999. And uh, like Kathy said, um, I've been active in the networking um, groups and shout out to our friends at office centers, as they always do a fantastic job. And that is where we met. I think it was all the way back in probably 2009 or maybe 10. So it's been a long, long time. And so here's what we're going to cover today. Um, of course, Kathy, you want to talk about what your networking like a pro is going to go yeah, through? So, you know, really, I've been working with people on, on networking. So what I'd like each of you to, to, to walk away with today is just some tips on kind of those do's and don'ts. 
Um, things have changed now that we're doing so much more networking online, but the myths still hold out. Um, we all make up some, some obstacles in our head around networking and then help you think about developing a, an outreach strategy so that you can develop an impact 100 so that you're efficient um, as well as strategic with having the right people in your network to accomplish what you want. Perfect. And then pass the baton over to Dave, who will show you how do you find some of those people possibly, or how do you market to them and, and grow your business. Absolutely. And really how to keep up with all of those contacts that you're making and networking. Uh, I remember, and actually this is, this is funny, I was just going through my business cards and I found a business card from when we originally met, Kathy. And, really? You know, you capture and you collect all of these cards and then they just go into a big file, or in my case, a drawer on your desk. And if you don't ever keep up with those folks, that time that you've spent is wasted. And so it's, it's all about how to create a follow-up system and how to get to the next step without spamming people. Because that's the other um, big thing that people tend to do. Getting someone's contact information is not equal to being able to spam them or send them something. And that's the worst way to start a relationship with someone is just to feed them a bunch of stuff that they don't want. So we're gonna talk about how to make a useful and helpful follow-up system that is a system that doesn't require a ton of input from you and it's not going to be overly daunting, but that is going to get you that additional connection and the best ways to grow your business without going crazy because there's just so much out there and you need to keep up and keep adding value. And then we are going to share a few resources and uh, some opportunities to dig deeper. And we both have a special offer for you as well. So Kathy, without further ado, let's get networking. Talk, tell us what to do. Okay, so everybody's going to learn how to network like a pro. Um, I want, uh, you know, each of you to just, you know, take a deep breath and whatever you think about networking, know that the survey I took of 500 people says that 67% of the people do not like networking. So if you do not like networking, but you know you need it, you're, you're in the right place because we're going to help um, give you some process and tools with that. So Dave, I'll take the next one. So a few other tips from this survey, we surveyed 500 people and, and really these are things to just think about of how can you uh, give and take you know, so often you've probably had an experience with somebody where they're taking a lot from you, but you're wondering, what am I getting back? You want people in your network to be reciprocal, um, to make it so that it's a valuable connection for, for both people. Um, Dave, I think it's funny that you mentioned business cards. Uh, maybe in the last year, what's been nice is I don't have any of those business cards sitting on my desk. Um, Follow-up is, is really key. And, and how you do follow up or when you do follow up, you wanna be that person that is proactive, um, keeping your name top of mind, but in a way that is helpful. So whether it's a forwarding of an article to someone um, or saying I was thinking of you or connecting with them on LinkedIn, we're gonna give you some success, suggestions, but follow up is definitely a place where, where people um, wonder what that looks like. And if you've ever looked for a job at any point in your career, a lot of people follow up when they're looking for a job. That's when they reach out. Um, and most people are empathetic about that when you're looking for a job, but you want to be following up or keeping in touch with your network kind of all along and finding that rhythm that you can. And then the final point that I say is stay true to you. Um, be friendly, you know, be yourself, um, be people want to do business with people they know, like, and trust. So finding that way of how do you show up? And I know there was a question in the chat about tips for introverts. And I, I actually think the pandemic may be really helpful for people that are introverted because the, the, the ability to connect with somebody through a chat or follow up on LinkedIn um, or send them an email, now that is more common than having to walk into a big room where you know 40 people are, are in there. So um, just following up and, and making those connections as a start. Okay, Dave, the next one, please. So one of the, the, the networking kind of, I call it like the, the do's and don'ts is there are so many ways you can network now online. And I think that social media um, is a place where you can find information out about people you know, so that you can, you can know things like, you know, 
are they into sports? You know, what are they doing? What other past jobs have they had? So I put these out here just because doing research is one of the ways to get yourself more comfortable with who are you connecting with? What might you talk about besides the work that you're doing? Or how can you find other things out, out to find out, oh, they just moved to, to maybe to Minnesota. Or you could find out things on LinkedIn like, oh, well, we work together with someone else because then you can connect in with somebody in um, a relationship that is, is more consistent. So I just show these by ways to say there's so many ways to find out information um, about people so that you can make a connection um, with them. So I, I noticed just from yesterday's um, you know, TV show, I was on WCCO with Jason Derusha and uh, Heather Brown, and I didn't know um, Heather at all. And so I went right to LinkedIn, and then to Instagram, where on Instagram, I could find out, okay, she's a mom of three kids. Um, she's very engaged. She just did a share the mic um, episode with, um, you know, expanding diversity and it just gave me comfort in knowing, okay, I'm dealing with somebody that I can make connections with. Jason, who I knew, I knew he was into food. I knew he's an Emmy award-winning interviewer, but just sometimes that little pieces of information put me at ease to be able to just show up more as myself of like, okay, we're just all at the end of the day, we're just people making connections. So next one, Dave. So again, online networking, and I call this kind of the, a little bit of the do's and don'ts. I think online in our head, we think, oh, it's going to be so much harder. It's so much more challenging um, to make connections. So I wanted to show this of this is what, how many screens are there? There's 16 people um, on this call. No whatever you can do the math. There's a lot of people on this call and, and I liken it to it's the water cooler. You know, whereas we used to connect with people and you'd talk to them a little bit at the water cooler. How was your day? What are you doing? Or maybe you'd stand at an event and stand next to somebody at the cocktail um, bar and talk to them. Now we're talking to people, I think, in the chat and trying to, to, to make that connection or trying even to show up. So what I noticed of this is, you know, this was a group, it's an asso speakers association and, you know, everybody but one person has their camera on. So right there, you get to see, you know, where are people calling from? You know, are they engaged? You know, this is a very dynamic um, group of people, but thinking about networking online, like the water cooler or, or how can you show up and make some connections is great. Um, so I, I do, I, you know, Dave put it at the beginning, you could put in here, you know, maybe something you're um, wanting to, you know, learn about networking, or if you can see other people's names, you know, sometimes what I'll do is I'll click on somebody's name to then see, oh, what, are, what is it that they do? And then maybe I'll follow up with them later. Um, so networking online has some, some ways that you can still make some connections. Okay, Dave, the next one. So I, I do, I really think with networking that do's and don'ts is have a plan, is know why are you connecting with someone? And so the first thing I always talk to people is I'm like, when's the last time you used the phone to actually talk to somebody, to reach out and call, call them? And usually people will say, well, I reached out to them on LinkedIn. You know, I've, called, I've reached out to them three or four times and I haven't heard anything back from them. And I sent them an email, but I haven't heard back again. And then you get discouraged and you stop trying to go forward. So I like the phone because part of my networking plan is how can I get connected to somebody sort of so that I'm really in engaged with the real person. So turning your camera on, using the phone, trying to find out information. My plan is always to where can I get to the where I can kind of hear their voice you know, or I can see them and get to know them a little bit. Um, okay, next one, please. Because with networking, I mentioned you want to have a plan and, and we, we think online networking is so much harder. Um, and it's, I don't know if I would agree that it's harder. I think it's just different because it feels so awkward um, if you're not used to making connections online. So where I like to start is this concept of the impact 100 of knowing who your people are. 
So why I mentioned to you that Dave and I met through Lori Spies is because this top 25, you know, that's a subset of your impact 100. It's knowing who the people are in your network that you could call up and say, you know, you're in my top 25 and you don't have to tell people they're in your top 25, but you probably know who they are is those are the people that will show up for you. Those are the people that maybe you're already doing some business with them, or you know what their services are, and you believe in their reputation, and they believe in your reputation. And so why I mentioned the office centers is, so those are places where when I want to get to another person, I may connect into my top 25 so that I can say, hey, I connected with them. Would you make a connection to me? Sort of that friend of a friend because it just multiplies your network so much and knowing your people, what that will do is it'll give you that real sense of confidence that, you know what, I have a great community. So also on today's call is Mary Lauer from uh, Sterling Cross Media Group. And Mary is who connected Dave and I to WCCO. And, you know, Mary's in the top 25, knows many, many people, does great PR. And, you know, having those people in your inner circle, because then when you make a post on LinkedIn and you, you know, you, we've all done this, we've made a post and nothing happens. Nobody likes it. Nobody comments on it. You wonder. And then a lot of us stop posting. Well, I've realized that what you want to do is when you make a post and you want something to happen, you call a few people on your top 25 and say, hey, I'm going to be promoting this event. Will you show up and endorse it? Will you help me out? So this concept of knowing who your people are, you know, really gives you a lot of confidence as well as some clarity of what am I trying to do and, and how, who am I helping and who's helping me? Okay, the next one, Dave. So I do, I, you know, I, I think um, I, I've always been kind of a, 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 math, a math nerd. I, I like math. Um, I like doing math around my network because it makes me feel that I'm on purpose with my networking. So I think networking becomes easier when you when you change your mindset from thinking, wow, I have to meet 500 people or I have to meet every single person on this call and get to know them to thinking, I need to know somebody who is in the engineering field or I need to know somebody who is part of an association that I would like to get more deeply involved in. So that when I start really breaking apart, and we're going to break up, break apart this impact 100. But when I start doing math like that, then I'm not as overwhelmed because I'm clear that I don't need I don't need 500 people anymore. I need 100 people that are purposeful and connected with me. Um, so when somebody asks the question is, how do you approach a contact you haven't seen for a long time? And um, I think that there can be a lot of grace given when you're going back to somebody that maybe you haven't talked to in a few years, but you have something in common with, you know, again, you can use the phone and then say, you leave a message, but you say, I'm going to send you an email. I'd love to reconnect. Here's what I'm working on. You know, I'm hoping we can find some time to talk and I'll pause there because when you say time, sometimes people think, oh no, I've got to give you an hour. And what I like to do is to say, you know what, I'd like to reconnect with you. Could we set up a 10 minute connection? Could we talk for five minutes? Could we talk for 15 minutes? Whatever is your number of time that you're looking for, because we're doing so much online, shorten it, split it in half, chop it off by a third, see what kind of results you get. So I used to say to people, oh, let's meet for a coffee. I'd love to get to know you. You know, the, the, you're starting to spend a lot of time with that. So, so splitting things in half and being very clear about that is a great way to, um, to connect with that. So I start doing the math about it. So we start with, we want your top 25. And the way you can start building this list is look at your emails look at your phone logs, look in your Instagram, look in your LinkedIn, look at your client list and start writing down those names. And that's the starting point of your impact 100. Those are the people that you're, you're working with the most. If you have a prospect list as well, you can put those people on your list, but maybe you're going to go back to the people you already know and say, I'm wondering, can you connect me to somebody at Capella? 
I'd love to get to somebody at US Bank. Could you make that connection for me? So you're starting to be more strategic to do math because this is where all these people fit together. Okay, Dave, next one. So here's the, the formula on this. And I, I did when I was thinking about today's, uh, today's session, I was like, this is a lot of information. So just take a deep breath. I said, I like math and start on the right hand side with the results because you want a formula for why are you networking? Why do you wanna have these relationships with it? You know, why do you want, as I say, the best people in your network that you can have? Um, because is it for your growing your business? Is it for sales? Is it for your career development? Are you looking for a new job? You wanna start with the end in mind and then you move into what's my process? What is my strategy? What is the, the, the goal of the way that I'm going to be doing those connections? Because what that strategy will do is it will give you that confidence that, you know, here's what I do is I'm going to reach out to people. I'm going to send an email. Then I'm going to use the phone. I'm looking to get 15 minutes to talk to them. You know, what is my process? So thinking about what it is that you want. So the, for the people that are out there that are introverted, you know, again, there's a lot of power in sending an email, using a phone call, phone to connect with somebody, connecting through a friend of a friend. So no longer do we have to, you know, always walk into the big networking event where there are 500 people. Because I should tell you this is in the survey we also found that the the more people that came into play in networking. So instead of just a one-on-one, -on -one, Dave and I are talking, we're networking. The more two, three, 10, 50, 100 people came into a room, the more people dreaded networking, no matter if you're introverted or extroverted. Okay. So, so people that I work with that I coach that are introverts, they always say, you mean you get overwhelmed when you're in a big room? And I'm like, yes, I get overwhelmed when I'm in a big room because there are so many people, it's overwhelming, you don't know where to go unless you have that strategy. So having that strategy and knowing my goal is I want to meet three new people, you know, in this in this interchange. And then on the left side of the formula is the people is, you know, what what type of people are you looking for? You want to, again, I said, do math, um, you want to be thinking about are the people in my network, are they giving to me as much as I'm giving to them? Do I have the right people in there? I call it your impact 100. Do I have diversity in my network? And that could be by age, by gender, by race, by industry. You know, do I have diversity so that when someone calls me and says, Kathy, I need a doctor, I can go, yep, you know what? I know a really good ear, nose, and throat. I'd love to connect you with them. Do I have diversity, meaning that I could say, okay, now, you know, 12% of the population is African American. Does my network reflect that? So what am I doing to have my network um, be a representation? And then, you know, in terms of I put belief and reciprocity because you want your network to be reciprocal. And again, I'm not keeping score of I did this for you and you did that for me. It's reciprocity of if I were to ask my network to help me out with something, would they help me? Would they do that? Will I be helpful to them? Will I go to bat for them? And then again, at the bottom here, this is a big, this is a big slide. We could spend, you know, when I do groups, we spend a lot of time working on this, but it's about that communication. It's about you know, no relationship is perfect. And I always say, you know, the, the more I get to know you, the more at some point, I'm going to say something that you may not like. And hopefully you will tell me, you will tell me that we, we need to work on this. And then we have stronger communication. We're better together because that emotional connection is powerful um, to why people want to do business with, with other people. That's where referrals come from. That's where you help somebody find a job because you have that connection. And again, daily habits, and I'm going to talk some about that. that. I'll give you some tips on specific daily habits, but what are you doing each day with your network to take some actions? Um, what are those things? So people will say to me, they're like, well, you know, I'm nervous about networking. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not that important. What would I, what would I have to say to someone? What, what, what would I have to offer? And that's the part where I, I recommend you back up, know your strengths, know what you're really good at. Everybody has something to offer someone else. 
So a lot of the, the younger people that I'll work with, I'll say to them, I'm like, listen, I wouldn't know how to use Snapchat unless you showed me how to use that. To me, that's a value. You know, you knowing how to make connections. I'm always fascinated because I think anybody under, you know, 25, they think nothing of building a relationship exclusively online, getting to know somebody. And I'm much more of, I want to be able to see you. I want to talk to you. Um, and I want to get there, but it's just knowing what your strengths are. Um, and then knowing to, you know, your daily habits are, do you follow up? Do you follow up with the people? Do you follow up with them when you say you will follow up? So one of my Achilles heels is sometimes I will follow up, but instead of following up in one or two days, it's a week goes by and it's a habit I'm always working on is can I follow up a little bit faster with people? Um, but having that process and putting time on your calendar um, helps you uh, helps you keep networking and relationship skills a focus. So, okay, I'm going to dive into Dave on the next slide is who's in your impact 100. Because again, people wonder, how do I build this impact 100? What is it? You know, where do I find all these people? And I mentioned the diversity, your centers of influence. Those are the people that will talk you up. So as centers of influence, maybe they, they're referring business to you. Um, they may not be a client. Maybe there's somebody in a complimentary business. When I was first starting my business, it was, okay, I need to know a few more. Um, I did a lot of work and I still do some work in the book marketing area. So I had publishers that would refer business to me or other PR people um, or um, manufacturers or website builders. So you want those centers of influence that are in there. People that might comprise your Impact 100 are clients, your prospects, uh, someone in nonprofits and be, being in an, involved in a nonprofit, serving on a board um, or being involved is a great way to broaden your network if that's one of your goals. And then, of course, government law enforcement, you know, having that diversity of partners um, gives you that perspective of what's going on. And then I like to have types I call like the advisor mentor. So I have people that they're mentors to me in my network, but I also have people that I'm mentoring them. And I find that's a really helpful way to have some depth to your network. So when somebody's looking for a job and they say, do you know someone at you know, this agency? I can say, well, no, I don't, but you know, let me check with somebody in my network. And then I find them and I'm like, okay, great. I do know somebody that's you know, three or four years into their career. And then of course, personal. Um, having those personal connections are great and making sure that the people that you know personally know what it is that you do. So when I first started my business, I was always like, great, I have all these relationships and they're personal relationships, but nobody really knew what I did. So I had to work on that of making sure they knew, okay, Kathy does coaching and training and you know book promotion. And so then they were able to refer business, but personal are just great to have. It makes life interesting. Okay, the next slide is categories. And this is sort of an advanced concept, but it, I, I show it to you just to be thinking of not everybody is your, your BFF. Um, and, but if they're in your impact 100, presumably you, you, you want the relationship to improve. And it's okay to let some people go out of your, 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 your network. I don't tell them they're out the same way. I don't tell people always, you know what, you're a gold. I wouldn't go up to somebody and go, you're a gold, but the platinum, those are your top, top, top relationships. Maybe it's 10% of your network. Those are the people that if they emailed you, you would jump and help them with whatever it is that they needed. They are so valuable to you and presumably you are valuable to them. Gold is the bulk of your network. So maybe 70 to 80% of it. Um, and those are people that maybe you're in contact with them, but not as frequently as your platinum, but maybe you see them, you know, once a month, you see them quarterly, you're talking to them, they're on your mail list, they're your connections. Um, but that's the solid part of your network. And then silver can be either people that you're not sure yet, you know, are they going to be reciprocal? Are they going to be helpful to your network? Um, are you going to be able to be helpful to them? Silver is smaller. Maybe it's 10, 
and it could be people that you're you're getting to know them and maybe they will transition to gold. Silver is also a place where you could look at it. And I look at my network on a quarterly basis and you could look at it and go, you know what? I've tried with those people. Um, I haven't heard back from them. And you know what? I'm not sure it's going to go anywhere. So I'm going to remove them off there and let somebody else take sort of that space or have that in there. And again, when you start making your impact 100 list, you may have only um, you know, 25 people and that's okay because what you're doing is you're just building to that next level. Okay, next slide. So here's a couple examples of how you can make some connections. Um, you guys, you can all read that um, on there, but I, I like to think about the point where, where it says introduce others and be a connector. So that's one of my sort of areas where I excel at connecting people. So that when somebody will say to me, um, I'm looking for somebody, you know, get in that engineering space, wondering, you know, do you know anybody? I will look through my LinkedIn and you can put in engineering and then I can find out, oh, I know these people. And I will say, yep, if I know the person well enough, I will, of course, immediately make an introduction. But remember, they're representing you. So you want to be careful about how you make those connections. But people in that are in my network know that I'm a connector. So when they're looking for somebody, I can connect them to other people. But I think, you know, that's one of the key points about making connections. And then, of course, at the top where it says have three key questions and kind of be interesting. I know when I first started a network, I was really stiff. I just was like, I was all business. I thought I've got to just show up, tell them what I do, ask them what they do and kind of move on. And I've tried to sort of soften that a little bit with the getting to know somebody or listening for that opening where somebody will tell me, you know, they're a huge basketball fan. And then I'll take a minute and let them know that, you know what, I love basketball too. So let's talk about that or have a question that's interesting, such as, you know, tell me about your most successful client. What did you enjoy about it? So that you're starting to ask questions that show people not only do you care, but you're curious. So those are two when you're starting to build connections um, to take a look at. So Dave, let's go to the next one because this is the part, the bloopers that always gets a chuckle out of people. Um, it's kind of the, the biggest mistakes of bloopers and how to avoid them. I shouldn't make, I got to change that word in terms of avoiding them because we all have bloopers. That's part of the funny part of the networking that goes on. If you haven't called somebody by the wrong name, then you're probably not saying enough people's names because you're worried about it. And it's okay to say, oh, I'm so sorry. I haven't, you know, we haven't connected for a long time. You know, when we, when we get to see people again in person, you can say, I'm so sorry. I know we've met. I can't remember your name. And you know what, if somebody's going to hold that against you, do you really want them in your network? Like it happens to all of us. Granted, if it's the fifth time you've asked somebody for their name, you may want to do things like get a hold of the attendee list before you go to an event so that you know who's in the room, because then you're not blindsided by that. Um, so the next bl blooper that I love is, um, is Dave, you got to show this next slide because this was one of my favorites of a blooper. And, and I don't know if anybody's had a, a filter, a filter on. I just heard that a woman told me, her husband used her, her computer and she had done the settings where it puts your eyebrows and your lipstick on. And so she had those settings set up and she, she went on the, he came off the call and he said, great, I'm 20 minutes in. And all of a sudden the, all the, the, the men that were in his group, they're like, are you wearing lipstick? And, and he, cause he wasn't even looking at this picture. And I thought that was so funny. So this one was a funny one with the, the networking bloopers where he thinks it's, he's a cat and he doesn't know what to do on it. And again, we all have them. And what we want is you want relationships where the blooper is just, it's not a big deal so that you don't have more anxiety about making connections. Um, and I actually think with, with the, um, COVID and all of us doing everything by Zoom, it's gotten really not funny, but just like we we have to do this. So there's one question in here, um, you know, that we got about somebody not hearing back from, from LinkedIn, you know, after like three weeks. And then all of a sudden they responded and, you know, that they 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 don't check it very often, but they wanted to connect via email. 
to me, there's that part of the blooper of like, we're on one channel, we're checking LinkedIn every day, wondering why haven't they checked. And some people just, that's not their norm or their habit yet. So those are the bloopers for me that I'm always trying to figure out, you know, where can I find the people in the space that they're at? What's the best way? So it's why I do use the phone because some of my clients are not using LinkedIn to the, to the degree that I am, or they're not on Instagram, or if they are on Instagram, they don't know how to use a DM message. And I'm wondering, you know, why haven't they do it? I have clients too, that I'll text them and then I don't hear from them for a really long time. And when I think about the work that they're doing, they have huge networks and, and I'm probably not a top priority in their um, texting. And I just, you can't take anything personally in networking. You just have to decide where do I find the people? So, okay, I have two more slides because then we got to have some time for Dave. So this is a checklist. Um, there's something on the Rock Paper Star um, website where you can get this as well as there'll be another tip sheet that we're going to give you. But again, this is the tool you can use to make that impact formula come to life. Thinking about your, your role, your result that you want. So what is your that goal? What is it that you want? Do you want 10 more people in your network? Do you want three new clients? You know, what is it that you want? And then we didn't cover this, but the, like, what are your keywords? What do you want to be known for? You know, what is it that people would say when they say, you know, Dave, will they say, you know, growth, growth marketing? You know, will they say HubSpot? Will they say, you know, inbound marketing? What will they say about Dave and his firm? And you want to make sure that the people that are in your top 25 know those three to five words about you so they can talk to you, talk about you. So they can be the ones that when they hear something and says, oh, my friend is really struggling with network networking. They're not meeting their sales quota. You can say, oh, yeah, send them to Kathy Paper. You, you want to have that visible. So another way to get to your strengths, I put a few tools on here. If you haven't done the Strengths Finder, Myers-Briggs or Colby, those are easy ones to do for under $50. You can find out language about yourself, what makes you unique. Um, so I learned the Strength Finder tool at Best Buy. I think it's really easy um, language and it just gives you more confidence of knowing here's why I'm a good connector. Then of course, make your plan um, so that you know what your top 25 is and then make an action plan of the details. Then the last slide I show you is that we can all be to network like a rock star. So on the left, you have Sarah Blakely, the founder of Spanx, um, showing off her Spanx. She's fun to follow on Instagram. She talks about, you know, 20 years it took her to develop this idea and everybody thinks she came up with it up overnight. Um, she's worked very hard and Prince, same thing. You know, if he were Roger Nelson, the kid St. Paul Central, would we know him as much? But we all start somewhere. And that's me at age uh, four up at the cabin in the little yellow swimsuit. And you can't see my little pink sneakers. I don't like to touch the bottom. I still don't touch the bottom, but kind of show up as authentically as you can. And the rock star persona that you all have will, will follow throughout. So that's what I've got for you today on networking. Dave? Thanks, Kathy. And there's so much in there as to what you should be focusing on. And I think one of the key things that I want to draw back as we move forward, and again, keep the comments and, and the questions coming, folks. This is really fun. And uh, the more we get to interact with you, the hopefully the better it is for all of us. But operating out of your keywords, what people are looking for when you're going to be the end result is really helpful and thinking about that for them as well and keeping it all inside of some sort of a system to keep up with people is where that makes real sense. So everything that we do inside of growing our personal brand, our business, growing our networking, and for the folks on the, on the line today, you all have different goals. Um, the, the biggest goal that I'm going to focus on right now is growing your individual business. And regardless of your role at your business, you are in sales. You're either selling you as a connection that someone wants to be connected with, you're selling your products and services if you do have a direct sales relationship, or just the fact that people are going to want to keep up with you. So focusing on that and making sure that you know who those contacts are and that you have a system to keep them together is very important.
And that's why I love talking about CRM. CRM is a centralized database of people. It stands for customer relationship management and having everything in one spot that you can trust, that you know, and that you can keep going back to is incredibly helpful. Um, when I meet with someone or when I get a phone call that I don't recognize, I'll look up the phone number of that person um, as I do my research to reach out with them. And if I have had contact with them, my CRM tracks that phone number. And then I can see every email that I've ever sent back and forth with that person, every call that I've connected with, I know that I've made connections and I have notes on all of my calls. The tool that I like to use for CRM is called HubSpot and they have a free CRM that you can use and that you can install. If you're interested, you can just go to hubspot.com slash CRM and install it today. Super helpful. And if you'd like help getting that installed, I would be glad to do that. If you use Gmail um, or Google Workspace or Microsoft or Microsoft 365, you can dovetail all of your emails into your CRM so that everything that you send back and forth to any of your customers, contacts, connections, or as you're networking, you can keep centrally. And that's incredibly helpful in just knowing what's happening. And then you can set tasks and you can set updates so that if you do know that it's someone's birthday coming up, you can just send them a quick note. Or if you're connected on social media, you can do that there as well. But it's not enough just to send out notes to people. You need to add value over time. And this is where people get in trouble, where they, they misplace the effort that they've put into just sending out notes. And if, any, if you connect with people, you grab those business cards, and then you just send out an email newsletter to all of them all at once every month, um, that's probably not as useful as simply interacting with people. And in order to interact with people at their level, you have to understand who those people are and what they want from you. Um, people ask me all the time, what is SEO, search engine optimization? How do I optimize my website for my website or for my clients and for Google? And the one thing that SEO comes down to is be useful as, po as useful as possible to the people that are looking for you before they know your name. So having the content on your website, having the, e the content in the emails that you send out or the outreach that you make as you're networking, that'll tease who you are to them. And it's the same thing as going into a cocktail party and only talking about yourself all the time, right? If you just go in and you blather, 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 nobody's gonna wanna do business with you or want to get together with you ever again, right? You need to spend as much time listening and interacting with people as you do talking or talking about yourself. So having a website that just says, you know, we've been in business for 22 years and we do these four things and blah, 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 is less interesting to people than just saying, here's the problem we solve. And couching that inside of, here's an example, a story on how we helped people. It's the difference between standing up in a BNI group or something like that and just giving your little ad that says, I need more leads or I'll work with anyone, and instead saying, I help businesses that need business growth to find the connections and to generate a lead value system so that they can grow their business faster. Now, something that tells a story. In order to get to those people, Kathy talked about this a little bit already, but you need to have personas set up. You need to have identified who are those perfect clients, who are your favorite people that you've ever talked to, and that if you could get five more of those people in your network, they're going to make a world of difference for you. For Kathy, it's the Impact 100 or even the Top 25, right? Who are those folks and writing for them. And you can almost start any email that you send out to a massive amount of people or any social media post to be a letter to them. Dear Kathy, here's what I do, right? Or dear Kathy, here's something that I can help you with or that I know that you're struggling with. Um, Catherine says, so I got your name from X some time ago and are you still willing to connect? Yes, so having that input and giving that reference is very, very important and helpful. Ask yourself when you're connecting with people, what do your contacts really need? What would they find helpful? Are you giving them what they need to help complete that process? Your job in 
interpersonal business relationships is to help people solve problems. The more you help, the more you'll grow. And are you following up on their terms? Some people like Facebook, some people like LinkedIn, some people just focus on email. Um, younger audiences tend to go into, you know, the, the more social of the social networks, the Instagrams, the TikToks, the Snapchats, sending texts or messages. So you need to meet people where they are. The key is you need to create content that answers people's questions before they even know your business. And they may have met you, they may have connected with you before, but they're really going to resonate if you identify and illustrate a problem that you've met and that you've solved that they can identify with. So how do you keep up with all these people? Well, you use a marketing and an automation software. CRM is the base. Having something clear and concise that captures all of the data for your customer, for your best person, for your network is going to help make helping them a whole lot easier using a software. Again, HubSpot is my tool of choice but there's lots of other tools out there that are amazing. Um, setting workflows based on actions. If someone fills out a form, if you connect and you use one of the tools that Kathy and I are going to give you at the end of this today, you're going to be offered the opportunity to continue in conversation with us. If you don't answer, that's fine. And you're not going to get spammed by any means, but we're going to use what you're telling us to hopefully try to give you more of what you're looking for. It's almost like a choose your own adventure if it's done right. You know, should, if you do or you don't open that email, if you do or you don't click on that link, if you go to page seven of the PDF that we, give, that we gave you in an ebook and that, and that particular page is about a specific topic, giving you more of what you're looking for is going to help. And you need to interact with people across all steps in their buyer's journey. And buyer is a little bit of a salesy term, and I apologize for that. But even as you're connecting in intrapersonal relationships, you want to identify things to attract their attention, right? So that's the stuff that makes people notice or click on a link. And then engaging them by having conversation, by giving them more of what they're looking for, and then delighting them by coming back and doing that outreach over and over again. People care about you only to the extent to which they know you care about them. So making that deep relationship and giving them a reason to keep working with you is incredibly important. How does it look in a day-to-day -day process? Well, here's an example of an automation that fits inside of an engagement campaign, right? So you have a web page. In this case, it's an ebook download that we have on our BusyWeb website about how to fix traditional web design. We go after specific people with this, but depending on what they're looking for, we're going to give them a guide that's how to do what you need to do. And then based on what they do inside of that document, we give them more information to, again, just help a little bit more. It doesn't go into a sales conversation. And if you download this white paper, you don't automatically get called by our team, but instead, we start to notice and we start to track. And I have lots of wonderful examples of people that go through and they download a white paper and then they visit the About Us page and they hover over my input or my, my bio. And then they go through seven other people and they check out our examples of what we do. And I know that that's an engaged person. All of that data is tracked and it'll actually send a nice reminder to me saying, you know, Mary Smith is super interested in what you're doing. She's visited six pages. She's been on your website for 25 minutes. It might be a good idea to give her a call. And then you just have that conversation. And so I track all of my contacts. I look at all of my marketing submissions. I can see all of the detail that goes into this. And I know I'm getting super nerdy, super fast. And this is a depth that you don't necessarily need when you're getting started. But I have a contact record of what everyone is doing inside of my connections. And so I know that I opened an email, another email, another email. I had a contact back and forth. Of course, I'm looking at my own contact record here. So of course I'm looking at my stuff all the time, but having that connection and helping in a useful way. And then you set a workflow, ideally. So you just go from step to step to step and help them based on, you know, if they download that, that uh, white paper, 
I'm going to set them so that I've just notified my team that they are interested in what we do. And then we set it as an owner so that people know what's happening. And then I wait a couple of days and then I send another email. If they do or they don't open that email, I'm either going to give them more of what that email included, or I'm going to take a half step back and say, you know, maybe there's something else that we can help you with. And so you can workflow all of this. And it's as easy as dragging and dropping things right in. And by the way, a solid chunk of all of this stuff is available in the free version of HubSpot. And so if you don't have a way that you're tracking and cataloging things, if you're using an Excel spreadsheet or post-it notes all over your office to try and keep up with everybody, do yourself a huge favor and just carve off a couple of hours sometime in the next few weeks, ideally just set a line in the sand and say, okay, by the end of the week, I'm going to go to hubspot.com slash CRM and I'm going to play with it. I'm going to look at a couple of videos. I'm going to see if this is right for me because it can be incredibly helpful to get you what you need. Once you have that data, you can look at what they're doing. So what kinds of emails are they opening? What are they clicking on in your messages? You know, where are they going on your website and all of that other stuff that goes into knowing them. And the more you know, the more you can improve your message. It's listening at a macro level, right? So instead of having good interactive conversations one-on-one, -on -one, which you absolutely need to do in networking, it's having those same conversations, but at scale so that you're interacting with everyone in your network and giving each of them kind of what they're looking for. You need to test and adjust your strategy all the time. You need to think about what those things are and how to get there. So this is super, super easy to do. There's a lot that you need to know in order to kind of play with it. But you almost, if as long as you're willing to be a professional tinker inside of what you do, inside of your marketing, inside of your connections, it's not hard, but it requires a little bit of thought. Just like being a good conversationalist, right? It's listening. And it's hard to listen because a lot of times we just like to talk to ourselves and just wait for someone to breathe long enough that it's giving you that three seconds to jump in and say, oh yeah, and here's what I did. So thinking about that and improving. A um, couple of handy overviews. Um, you know, Having the cats philosophy is a great way to think about having a broad structure, having the right content to the right audience at the right time is going to be successful. And in order to do that, you need to know who, are, who is my audience? What are they looking for? And if you're testing and adjusting your strategy, you know, okay, well, these are the things that people seem to be looking for. And the right times and the right success, if you have your goal, then you know that they are or they are not doing what you want them to do. Deb asks, Dave, looking at a one-to-one -one person example, does HubSpot do the same for you in, in Congregate? 1,000 visitors, 500 did X, and 300 did Y, and 200 did, did Z. Yes, if you have that much marketing, you can absolutely look at that. And for an organization like Deb's that has several thousand, tens of thousands of people in its network, you can get that aggregate information. For a one-to-one -one networking conversation, it might just be, you know, there's 55 people that I've loaded into my CRM. And I know that these are the most important things or this is when people follow up to me. So yes, you can track that stuff. And it's important to keep that, keep your eye on that needle. Um, if you're looking for ways to follow up, setting Google alerts for your top 25 might be a really great way to keep up. And that's just google.com slash alerts. Look for their name. Um, inside of HubSpot, I've got a tool set up that it follows all of their social media accounts. And if someone posts something I'm hiring, or we just celebrated an anniversary, or, you know, happy birthday, Mary or Mark, um, that kind of stuff will warrant a note from me. Having a newsletter and a reminder to stay in touch. If I tell someone, why don't I touch, ba touch base with you in a couple of weeks, I'm going to set a task for myself in two weeks to call. And since it's in my CRM, I know in, in a glance by scrolling down one inch, here's what we talked about last time. So I follow back up with that and I give them more of what they're looking for. There's a model for generating attention and that's called AIDA. You might've seen this in marketing, but um, your attention, having a good goal 
and a subject line that's going to capture people's attention. We all see those spam emails and we all see social media um, accounts that are doing this really well. Um, the things that you're tempted to click on in your networks, pay attention to that and use some of that in your personal marketing, in your interests. Um, the interests, are you giving them relevant content? Again, you wanna focus on them first and then what can you do for them? And make sure that you're always adding value and of course, including a relevant call to action. Calls to action shouldn't be click here. They should be something related to what you're doing. Grow your business now, or let's talk, or give me a call or whatever that is and make it as action oriented as possible. As you're looking to build trust, again, you don't wanna just buy a list and then spam it out. That's the in-person in equivalent to standing on a street corner with a bullhorn or just throwing stuff at people, right? You don't wanna do that. Instead, you want to connect with people and when people are engaging with you, make sure that you're giving them that obvious next step and telling them what's in it for them. If you're going to ask for a lot of information from people, the request needs to match the value of what you deliver. So if you're generating a helpful, insightful tool, you can ask a couple more questions because it takes those questions to learn about what that tool can do. If you're just signing up for an email newsletter, it doesn't make any sense to ask 17 questions to get an email newsletter to them. It's just not in line with what you do. Make sure you do take time to clean up your contact database as you move in Kathy's um, from platinum to gold to silver. Sometimes those silvers are going to drift away and that's okay, but it doesn't make sense to keep them in your CRM. So spending a little bit of time every month to just look at, okay, who hasn't talked to me in a long time or who is it clear is just not on the same level or are we going to be able to connect with? Um, Martin asks, how much of the content that you share should be original versus researched? And what about sharing create content created by your Impact 100? Fantastic question. And I would say for SEO, as much of the content that you publish on your website, for example, in your blog, as much of that should be unique as possible. But as far as networking and deepening relationships with people, sharing, resharing content created by your Impact 100, spending time in LinkedIn and sharing posts that your network has done is going to pay off tremendous dividends. It makes you more useful to everyone in your network because ideally you're sharing smart and helpful things, but also it's that little boost and that's showing appreciation, helping delight your existing network by just proving that you care. So great, great question. Thanks, Martin. And everything that you do, your content should be useful, helpful and engaging and ideally some sort of emotional. So make yourself stand out by sharing stories, sharing tips, tricks, and help, and just help as many people as possible. In networking, in content, in everything that we do, the more you can do to just drive that line between what someone needs and the fact that you can answer that need, the more successful you'll be. So we talked a lot. We've got two minutes left to the top of the hour. I do want to give you a couple of what's next. Kathy's got something and then I've got something for you as well. So Kathy, talk about your networking plan. Oh yeah. So I, I have, uh, this is a, a tip sheet just so to summarize some of the things that we, um, we covered and things that you want to do. And then there's also another item on the website um, the Rock Paper Star website where you can fill out that actual plan that we went through um, so that you've got clarity on that. So enjoy. Thank you. So bit.ly slash networking tips 2021. Be sure to check that out. And for me, if you go to busyweb.com slash marketing dash quiz, this is an overview and it's a very simple form that's going to ask, what are you doing? And then we're going to actually tell you and give you some other ideas based on what you're doing. It's almost like a personality finder, but it's a marketing personality finder where you can see, are you actually helping your customers solve the needs that they have? And have you even identified what that need is? So if you've always wondered, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Taking this quick marketing quiz, it's gonna take you like 10 minutes, will result in a grade, 
and a, and a bunch of tips on what you can do to better reach the people that you're trying to connect with. Um, here's how to stay up with us. Um, you can hit me at davidbusyweb.com or 612-293-WEB3 back when you could, uh, back when people cared about <laughs> nice. how that I works. I love that. <laughs> yeah. And um, Kathy, you can keep up with, with her there. Any, any last words as we're closing out, Kathy? No, I just think, you know, take some action every day. So all of you that are here, you know, good, good for you because you're, you're, you're learning more about your marketing and how you individually kind of personally network. And to me, marketing is your networking, your company. So you want to, you know, learn from the best and Dave's got good, great, great tools um, and strategy to help you do that. Spectacular. Thank you, Kathy. This was so exciting. And, uh, you know, as seen on TV, um, I hope this gave you everything that you needed. And thanks to Mary Lauer for hooking us up with that uh, interview. So thanks, everybody, for attending. Again, you'll see this on social networks. Um, I'm posting it on my YouTube. We're going to post it out on Kathy's networks as well. So thank you all very much. And have a fantastic day. Thanks, Kathy. This was super fun. Thank you. We'll do We'll do it again, right? We'll do it Heck again. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everybody. Oops.